Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. I am under the belly of this beast, the Cabazone dinosaurs. I am about to embark on a 2,500, 26, 27, close to 3,000 mile trek. I've already been driving for about an hour, current time 6 a.m. I'm heading to the East Coast, back to Florida, not in a rental car, in my own vehicle, not on a plane, it is brisk out here and very windy. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? So early, in fact, the sun is peeking up there in all its beauty. And the two restaurants here are not even quite open yet. The wheel in has been demolished. Now, some of the spots I will be traversing down, most of which, well, all of which will be on Interstate 10. And there is a Valentine's Day overlay on the dinos themselves. You can see it says love there on the side and be mine on Mr. Rex there at the end. Yeah, it's very windy out here. I have my hand cupped over the microphone hoping that will help quite a bit as well as the little wind muff that is on there. Woo! See the gustiness there. The trees going in the wind. I'm about to get on Interstate 10 and head westbound. All of which I will be showing over the next series of days. We'll be right off the interstate. I'm going to attempt to make as much time possible. Tagging along also for this journey is Big the Foot. Just dangling there. I know, I think about Pee Wee's Big Adventure very prominently as well, Big the Foot. When I look at Mr. Rex there. But I also think of the wizard, Fred Savage. I always like kind of swinging by this spot. Classic goodness. And not the backside of water, but the backside of a pink dino. Compliments of Claude Bell. All right, on to the thoroughfare. Looks like there's some snow caps up there on the top of those peaks. And also, these windmills just spinning around, doing their thing. The good thing about this trek is they just stay on this road. No need for real directions, just continue eastbound on the 10. I'll get off at a few exits here and there. Focusing in on sunset over there. Sunrise. Am I saying sunset? Sunrise. I still haven't had coffee yet, so my brain is not coherent. Veered off just a bit to this downtown area of India. This taco stand burger spot looks really fascinating. Pretty cool architecture here. Not exactly a beehive of activity. Oh, goodness. What happened there at the moment down here? We're all familiar with lines in the middle of a highway. By the way, are these petunias? Did you know that the reason for those, the creator, was Dr. June Robertson McCarroll, who back in 1917, according to this placard, veered off the road from an oncoming automobile. And personally, right after that, it states here that she personally painted the first stripe in California on Indio Boulevard, separating the road into two sections. I never knew that. And there is some glass up here. All 
All right, just a little, little quick pit stop. I'm off the interstate. Interstate's over there. This is just a little highway. Current price here at this station, three twenty-five for for unleaded. I don't know if there's a difference between unleaded plus and premium. Maybe we just go with uh, just the regular self-pumping nozzle here. All you got to do is just put that little switch on. I'm gonna go inside and get myself a piping hot beverage once I'm filled up at this establishment. A little coffee, a little caffeine for the day. Beautiful countryside out here, just cruising through California. The deserts of California. When you think of Los Angeles, you think of cityscape. You don't really think of desert. Not a classic car alert. A truck. The technical population of Desert Center is just about 200 people. Pretty much an abandoned town. Whenever I pass through here, I always think of the Airwolf episode from the mid 80s with Jan Michael Vincent, where he flies the helicopter through here, through this very stretch of road. In fact, the station was right up here. It explodes. A little bit of a fire had developed. Also, this building the side on the right up there was also utilized. I think my favorite performance by, well, favorite thing he starred in was in the early 70s, a Charles Bronson film by the name of The Mechanic. An amazing ending. I don't want to give any spoilers, but the ending to that film, incredible. Yeah, right here was used as an office in that Airwolf episode. cafe. You can see someone has, let's just pull up here, someone has spray painted on the inside. It says, best coffee. Your best coffee. I already procured a cup a moment ago from the other establishment. You best not remove the caffeine. Well, re best remove the caffeine. Truck driver driving by is looking at me like, what is wrong with you, sir? That's what he's saying. This, you can rent this out. Well, obviously you can, the exteriors you can see from just out here. So you can just kind of wander around and show it. But if you would, if you have a production that you're, you know, music video, a movie, television show, commercial, say you wanted to use the interiors, it is a, a location that you can call the number and, and rent it out. All right, moving on. Cheers. Real quick, like though, peeking in the window here, you can see what's inside there. It's like a kind of old school diner. Pretty neat. Would be a perfect location for some desert scenes if you were making a film. There's the post office over there. And in that episode, the episode of Airwolf was called Sweet Riches. I'm not joking, that's the real name of it if you want to look it up. And it flies right by here. Right down this, this desolate road. Continued up the ways, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles to the community of Blythe. Look at all these sheep out here in the field. There's someone walking through the grass there. Is that a modern day shepherd? I even see a sheepdog out there. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of sheep. I just pulled right over here off the, off the road. You hear the trucks going by. It's probably two or 300 sheep here in Blythe. Right on the state line. Almost, almost over the state California line. Okay, see you later, sheep. Crossing over this river, the Colorado River. I'm not going into Colorado, but I have just crossed into Arizona. Out of California. 
See you later for now, California. According to the signs, that is Dome Rock. Because the sign said Dome Rock Road leads over there. So I'm just assuming that that is Dome Rock. Stopping off in Quartzsite to say hello to High Jolly. I was, I was gonna say hi to High Jolly, but that just wouldn't make sense. Here's a camel. Underneath that pyramid. The last camp of High Jolly. Stone marks the resting place of High Jolly. Also known as Philip Tedro. High Jolly was hired in 1857 as a camel herder. Little breeze there, gust of wind. I always stop, this is like one of the stopping points, probably half a dozen times in the course of my life. It is on the National Register of Historic Places. Take a look at that. It was also designated in 1935 by the Arizona Highway Department with this little placard. Camel driver, packer scout, over 30 years of faithful service. Nineteen oh two. Born in eighteen twenty eight. High Jolly. Here in Quartzsite. Quartzsite is one of the biggest congregations of RVers at certain times of the year. Thousands upon thousands congregate here. All right, moving on. You know what's interesting? I have heard the stories have been told by, by many people, and I even, I even thought, I even bought into the fact that it was a camel laid over there. In fact, it was a man by the name of High Jolly. Not a camel, but he was a camel herder. I was way off. I'm glad I, I'm glad I read the info here, because that, that clears it up for me. So just to clarify, it is not a camel. Well, as best I can guess, it's not a camel there. It's a man who was known for herding camels. Not herding, her, H-E-R-D-ing. Kind of like that, that modern day shepherd a few miles back. There's a photo of him right there and his bride. Huh. I guess it helps to to read. Arrived in Buckeye. I'm curious, what is that drum looking item there on the pole next to the tree? It looks like it's like a kick drum. Nonetheless, next to this residential area is Hobo Joe. That is the name the town has given him. 20 something feet tall. Hobo Joe is very impressive as far as the, the height of, of him. He's got a flower there on his lapel. A little scarf around his neck. Well, actually, no, it's not a scarf. It's a like a bandana, almost as if he knew the, the current situation was going to be happening when he was when he rolled into town years ago. He's ready. All he has to do is just like slip it up over the chin and the nose, and he's all set. Oh, his shoe here. Has seen better days, but he's still got some still got some years on it. Oh, there's the sculptor's name, Jim Casey. 1967. I would have guessed it was a little more recent than that. Than that. Pretty dang cool. Hobo Joe. There's a car wash right over there. You can hear a vehicle 
be cleaned at the moment. Hobo Joe is just overlooking the cleaning mechanism. I could probably get a, I, at some point on this journey, I'm gonna get, a, get, get the car washed, my car washed. Later on, maybe another day or so. It's very dusty out here. I feel if I get it washed now, it's gonna just gonna get dirty again in like five minutes. Carrying on. It's nice to kind of stretch the legs a little bit, but kind of cooped up. Okay, back on the road. Carrying on now, about 10 or 15 miles from the last spot into Phoenix. This yard looks very interesting. There is quite a bit of things collected. State's New York City limit, that obviously is not correct. There is a Coca-Cola piece of signage there. We got, oh, there's Groot on the Tin Man's noggin. Also says Chicago City Limit, also not correct. The sorry the lot is full in that very large bird cage there. Wow, this is fascinating. This is in someone's yard. Quite the collection. Oh, I see Ronald back in there. There's old Ronnie McDonald. And check that out. A vintage muffler man. These are scattered all over the U.S. I always try to find them. I don't think I've ever seen this one before. I've never been in this neighborhood. That is great. He's holding an axe, not a muffler. The reason they're called muffler men is because they, they used to be utilized by establishments that would fix your car and they would have a muffler out front. They would fix your muffler. So he would be holding a muffler and you can see by the design of his hands that it would be set up to have a muffler just kind of teetering there in his arms. So hence the name Muffler Men. Is that Hercules? I think that's Hercules over there also. And someone yelling. It's like an usher that is yelling. It says speed limit nine and a half right there. Yard of the month. Okay, this got an award for yard of the month and there's a McDonald's golden arches up top. This is great. It says beware of dog. I wonder if you have a dog on side. I don't see a dog. You had better beware of that muffler, man. That is, that's awesome. They got the right idea with the thumbs up. <laughs> yes. All right, heading back over to I-10 now. This is great. I had no idea there would be this much stuff tucked away in this. There's a cactus with a mustache. Tim Tracker? Well, vintage Tim Tracker cactus? Tim doesn't have the, the uh, rolly fingers mustache style anymore. He's got a beard. That's how, that's how I always refer to anything with a mustache. There's the Statue of Liberty with glasses and a lucky number seven and some bol broken bowling pins there and a snowman. So good. And there's a real cactus off in the distance. See that real cactus over there? Very tall real cactus the next corner. Going westbound the opposite direction of the way I'm going. It is very backed up for, gosh, probably five or ten miles. There was an accident that I passed a few miles back. Everyone's out of their cars wondering what's happening. Quite a bit of a backup. See, it's just all a complete standstill. It's like this for the last three or four miles and as far but far down the way as I can see. This is just outside Phoenix. Heading in westbound. I'm heading east. Smooth sailing for me, but for everyone else over there. You gotta be patient. I've been there. I've, I've been in I've been in that situation before where you just have to wait. Be patient.
price, 241 here, another self-pumping nozzle. And I'm gonna go and get another piping hot beverage inside this Circle K. No luck on the coffee. There was quite a bit of a line inside and only one cashier. So got in my car, drove a little farther down the freeway, and I'm noticing this in front of this restaurant sign, which is no longer there. There's a little gazebo and Picacho Peak, which is this mountainous formation. Look, there used to be something here as well that has been torn down. But this used to be possibly a muffler man style figure that went up just basically to his torso, just to the waist. It's all been removed. It's got a fence around it. Not really serving any purpose whatsoever, but it does have a fence. Yeah, there's another restaurant here. The series of forgotten relics along this roadside. And this road that runs parallel to I-10 really is not utilized. You can see it's pretty desolate. It's a very busy traffic just off to the side there with the interstate. Oh, hello there, B. You should not be on my steering wheel, B. Can I help you? Uh, go out the window. I open the window. Fly out the window, B. Okay, now you're hiding, B. There you are, B. Go on. Go, 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 go. Get out there. Go, go. Woo. Go, go, get out. No, no, stay out there. Stay out there, B. Woo. Close one. There really are a lot of cactuses through here. There's a very retro RV parked over there next to that tower. But yeah, there's just like hundreds of cacti through here. All right, back on the interstate. I know I'm moving by at a very rapid pace and it's way over there, but there are a lot of airplanes that are no longer being used. A bunch of airplanes, way over there, just parked in the middle of nowhere. Way over there, kind of zoomed in, but going by very rapidly with the foliage zooming by. You can see it though. Lots of them. Not accessible to the public. Pretty neat. Found yet another muffler man holding another pickaxe. This one right on the outskirts of Tucson, Arizona. And I believe I'm going to stop here for the evening. By all accounts, I looked up the distance and just about 500 miles I accomplished today. I think that's a good, that's a good start for this cross-country road trip. If you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. And if you're new here, please subscribe. It helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over.